Okay, today I think what we're going to talk about is combustion. Now, specifically, we're going to talk about combustion in a natural gas appliance or a propane appliance. They are gas when we burn them. They're, they're gas when they come to the appliance. Uh, propane's a liquid while it's in the tank, but we boil it to produce a gas. Okay, nothing burns unless it's a gas. Oil, if we take fuel oil and try to burn it, we actually have to heat it up so it evaporates and becomes a gas. If I'm burning wood, I have to heat it up very hot to drive the gas off the wood. So it's the gas that burns. In the case of natural gas and propane, we have a better situation, an easier situation to get things prepared to burn because it's already a gas. All we have to do is put heat next to it and I'm going to show you our little pilot light there. Okay, that pilot light is probably running about 1500 degrees, 1800 degrees. Uh, natural gas, which is what we're using here, uh, ignites at about 1100 degrees. So there's plenty of temperature to light it. And all we have to do is mix a little air with it and it'll light off. This makes it really simple. I mean there's things to it that you know to make it right and to get all the heat out of it and so on. But primarily it's just simply light the gas. Now remember in, you know, and, and there's plenty of videos that will tell you all about the oxygen molecules and so on like that. That's not what this is for. Air is 20% oxygen and approximately 80% uh, nitrogen. Okay, nitrogen does not take part in the combustion process. So why is it, is it important? We have to add quite a bit of air in order to get enough oxygen to make something burn effectively. So we have the concept of feeding air which is part oxygen into the burner, uh, apply the fuel gas and light it. But in order to complete the burn we have to add more air than we would expect we would have to add because there's so much nitrogen in it. So, we call it excess air. That's more air than is needed for combustion, but we're trying to make sure we have assured there is combustion, complete combustion. So, we add excess air in. Okay, now we've lit this thing off. And up through this flame is a process of combustion. It's beginning down at the bottom. And as the, the primary air, that's the air that's mixed with a gas before I feed it out of the end of the burner. So that's primary air. Secondary air, this is the air that comes around and goes up and mixes with the hot gas being burnt and makes, a, uh, makes for complete combustion. Now you'll notice most of this fire is blue. I'm going to cut the primary air down on this. Now you notice a, a lot of this has turned yellow. You know, we used to actually use natural gas, mostly coal gas, but uh, we used to use natural gas as lights. We used a little flame for a light, so you could get this yellow gas. Now this is a this is essentially no primary air. It's kind of lazy yellow tips. This isn't what we like. Is this is the burn? that's done in this, is it complete? Yeah, pretty much is. When you go out the top of that, you're not going to find a bunch of, of carbon monoxide. I'll explain carbon monoxide quickly. Carbon monoxide is incomplete combustion. There's not enough air, so again, instead of ending up with CO2, you end up with CO, which is just one part of oxygen instead of two parts. So, uh, the combustion is not complete. Actually, Carbon monoxide is a flammable gas, and a lot of flammable gas detectors will detect CO. Anyway, 
Uh, we want, when we burn this, we really don't like this kind of flame. It does work if there's enough air around it, but we like a blue flame. A blue flame means I've got more primary air in it. And now we're gonna see if we can get this out to some kind of a blue flame. Pretty much got the blue flame. Uh, that's what we usually use. Uh, combustion is pretty much complete and I don't have too much more air than what I need. Okay, so what happens when I t put too much air to this flame? Now, you understand we are moving our secondary air right up here and it's catching the outside of this flame and it's mixing with the fuel and, and finishing the burn. That's the secondary air. The primary air is coming up through the burner and I'm gonna uh, open this up about as wide as I can get. It doesn't make a lot of difference on this burner. It's maybe just a little bit more ruffled and a little bit more harsh, but not much. Some of them it's quite a bit. Okay, I've got too much air for combustion now. Now what does too much air do? If you have too much primary air, that cold gas comes into the flame from inside, in this case, and it mixes with the, the gas, but because there's too much air in there, it actually cools the flame down a little bit. Now we want a hot flame. We want the flame to be as hot as we can get it so that it will transfer heat quickly. If I put way too much air into it, it doesn't do that so well. So that's why we are adjusting primary air like I'm doing right now and trying to get it down so you can see a little bit of yellow tips, eh, pretty much gone, let's go a little farther, a eh, little bit of yellow tips in it and we'd like to get rid of those. That's a happy medium of a flame does not have too much primary air that cools down the flame but has enough primary air to get a good complete burn uh, and not add too much to cool it down. I don't want to overemphasize cooling this flame because if you cool a flame down on a natural gas or propane appliance it isn't that huge a deal. It doesn't make a huge amount of difference in the amount of heat that, that comes through the burn. I will demonstrate it on a real furnace uh, and I'll change primary air adjustments on it and you can see there's really not a whole lot of difference. Uh, but it's one of the things we do to increase efficiency a little bit. So we want to get our primary air set up so that we just get rid of yellow tips uh, and that gives us less excess air. We always have excess air. Excess air has to be in the burner to assure that the burn is complete. It's like anything else. You could set it up in the laboratory and it's perfect, but when you put it out in the field, you're going to have to put some fudge factor into it uh, to make sure that it still works the way you want it to. By the way, this flame is not a good flame for a heat exchanger in the case of uh, this conversion type burner. And I'll show you what they do to actually make this a better flame because uh, most conversion burners are put in fairly large combustion chambers that used to be used for oil or coal and they have a little doohickey in here and I'll show you that in a sec. Okay, that's a flame spreader. That just spreads the flame out to, uh, so it impacts the uh, side of the heat exchanger a little better. Uh, so natural gas, easy to burn. Propane, easy to burn. Don't have to heat it up. All you got to do is get oxygen with it and then get enough uh, heat in it for the ignition. You know, about 1100 for uh, natural gas. Can't remember what it is for propane. 
and then it burns. Try to control primary air. You do actually control secondary air to a certain extent with the design of the furnace. Like this would not burn, you would not have this out like it is. It would be inside a combustion chamber. Control your primary air to keep the flame from cooling down too much and uh, get enough excess air so that the, uh, the burner does not produce carbon monoxide from incomplete combustion. And that's combustion for the natural gas and propane burner.